Wait, don't trash that used or broken computer, monitor, or TV. Do the right thing. Recycle your unwanted or non-working electronics for free. You can recycle computers, monitors, and televisions with eCycle Washington. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations may drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's back. And not just for one day, not for two days, Steve, three big days of pain, baby. Yeah, rock with us for three days in the summer. This is the kind of pain you like. This is the kind of pain even Vicky can't, you know, I mean. Yeah, she I think she likes all the pain. Yeah, she does. She likes all the pain. Yeah, you're a good point. Tuesday, July 30th, Friday, August 2nd, Saturday, August 3rd. We're talking pain in the grass at the White River Amphitheater. Music. We got the music you kids will love. Oh, yeah. All the nicest songs are for your kids. <laughs> we got the slip or not. Hey, how you doing? Marilyn Manson, Volbeat, Disturbed, plus a lot of great local bands. I mean, Steve, I know. Plus, and, and some other, like, national bands, but you know. I'm excited because Volbeat just announced that their new record, Rewind, We Play, Rebound, is coming out on August 2nd, right around Pain in the Grass. They're going to hey, play on the 30th. Seems... Of, yeah, but a few days before their record comes out, we'll be able to see them. How, how cool is that? Good timing. Yeah. Those are the three R's we can all agree on. Nice. You want tickets? Get them. LiveNation.com. $2, each ticket sold. You know where that goes. A really good cause. The Vitology Foundation, they do good work. So you know what? you got to see pain. Do it for all the right reasons. Go to KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix. Don't be a loser. Oh. Oh. B-Mix. <laughs> You're a loser. Maybe whack him instead, because it's Whackin' Wednesday. Whack it. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! Whack it. Steve just put his little fingers in the air like he didn't care. That was a little mini whack. A little uh, mini oh, whack. I love a little mini whack. Whack right. it. <laughs> well, let's just get to our contestant then. Uh, we got Casey and Kent to take on Steve. Casey, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Maybe he's playing for a pair of tickets to check out Duff McKagan, who's going to be playing with Shooter Jennings over at the Showbox on June 16th. Nice. Go to KISW.com for all the details. If you want tickets, you can get them now at AXS.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. Get for those playing at home, Casey will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Casey, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. What Beyonce song has the parenthetical line, put a ring on it? Pass. In what year of the late 2000s was the animated film Up released? Uh, 17, 18, 19. No, no, no. Finish the saying. Barking up the what? Barking up a tree. N- no. Barking up the wrong tree. Yes. In the medical field, what does the R in RN stand for? Registered. Yes. The company Ocean Spray was formed by three farmers of what fruit? Cranberries. Yes. In an orchestra, the concertmaster almost always plays which instrument? Uh, Violin. Yes. Need You Tonight was a hit for which Australian band? Men at Work. No. Pass. The Central African Republic is located on what continent? Africa? Yes. yes! Who played Seth in the comedy Super Bad? Seth Rogen? No. Uh. 
Crackhead. Uh. <laughs> well, technically correct. I cannot yes. give that to you. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. You know what? I'm also blanking on his name too, and I felt I'm fat. that's what I'm thinking. The fat kid, but she's not fat anymore. No, the fat kid who got uh, yeah. turned into a fat adult, who turned into a skinny adult, who turned fat again and oh. then skinny again. And why can't I think of his name? This well, is horrible. Don't say anything. I know get... Emma. I know Emma Stone. Yeah, well, yeah. she's always with him. Mm-hmm. Just I got it now. It's too late. Uh, yep. Don't, don't say anything. I don't have. Steve's yet, coming Casey. in here, and uh, I know. BG will probably figure out halfway through and go, oh! I don't, I know, it'd be too late by now. I'd, be, yeah. I'd have oh, to pass. And no. I'd be so mad at myself. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm still, I can't you think still of his don't. name. don't. That's great. Wow. Gosh, Danny, darn, He's man. right in front of me. It's you. not no, Danny. I, 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 hey. I'm yeah. using it as one of your guesses. This okay. is how BJ thinks when he sees his brother and he's trying to remember his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Uh, guys, man, it's, you know, I never, I, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't on a middle name basis with him. That's Apparently. Was. I was on a first name basis with him. That's how close we were, my brother and I. Luckily, you know his last name, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I guess. You, you think so? Yeah. Steve, are you ready? Ah, yes. What Beyonce song has the parenthetical line, put a ring on it? Oh, single ladies. Yes. Single lady. I don't know how really. <laughs> I love the dance you just did. Thanks, Steve. I did the, uh, yeah, that put a ring really on it. Fine to watch. Uh, on. It looks in, like you're actually having oh, a sloppy oh, session. Oh, 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 like oh. Next there. question. Bro. In yeah. what year of the late 2000s was the animated film up released? 2008. No. 2007. No. 2009. Yes. Okay. Finish the saying. Barking up the what? Wrong tree. Yes. In the medical field, what does the R stand for in RN? Run. No. Ah. Rug. No. Random. No. The company Ocean Spray was formed by three farmers of what fruit? Grapes. No. Watermelon. No. Um, apples. No. In an orchestra, the concert master almost always plays what instrument? The, the, the stick. No. The stick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Saxophone. No. Drums. No. Yeah. Need You Tonight was a hit for which Australian band? NXS. Yes. Yeah. The Central African Republic is located on what continent? Africa. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. And with that one, you tie. Uh, oh, so congrats, Casey. Very close. Good job, Casey. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks, yeah. man. Right. You know, actually, it was... Uh, that's like we're two for two on wins and losses, and now two ties. So I'll wow! Down, oh, buddy. We're so like, another we're like rubber match teams. for you. <laughs> Three deuces. Yeah. So you have the, this morning you had somebody that's tied with you, so it's going to all go down. At and some I, point, I remembered his name at the ocean spray question. Okay. Well, Steve never got to the question. Yes. Who played Seth in the comedy Superbad? Jonah Hill. Yes. Yeah. Damn it! I would have won. Yeah, you, you would have. Way too much time. And I would have lost. Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't think of Jonah's name to say. I, at first, I said Jordan Peele in my head, and I go, well, well, I know not. it's not him. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I know I know I'm close. That'd I know it's a J, you know? And yeah. then it finally came to me right when Ocean Spray came around. So I got to get cranberry juice whenever I have a brain fart. Yep. And that's it. Uh, it's They were formed. Ocean Spray was formed by three farmers of cranberries. Mm-hmm. In case you got that one correct. He also got the RN, which is registered. Registered nurse. Registered. Nice it's going stupid. stupid. That's yep. a, that makes way more sense than random. Yeah, and when you said stick for the concert master, you were thinking of the conductor. I was. Yes, the concert master is kind of like, uh, I guess, the player coach of the orchestra. I have no idea who that is. It is the usually the first chair, and it's usually violin. Oh, so and a first Casey chair is a concert master. Yes, they're the uh, ones that are, while they're doing it, kind of leading sort of thing. I mean, I didn't do that much research. Jeez, I watched it, Umbrella Academy, and they never called her concert master one time. She, that was the ch- position she was going for. Yeah. So oh, the whole say, thing. Did, did yeah. they say, I know she was going for first chair, but did they first ever chair. say concert master on the I show? No, I don't think so. I don't yeah, think they actually never heard the term. That. That's all right. I have to remember that one. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I won't because I can't remember Jonah's name. There you go. Uh, congratulations on Casey on tying Steve. Yeah, if you win or tie, that's how you get the prize on Beat Migs. It's just like that. Would you guys agree that Super Bad one of the greatest movies of all time? Ooh. I have and to see it again to see if it holds up. Oh, yeah. I, I would put that in my top 10 of all time because I have to tell you. Yeah. I can't tell you the last time I watched it. Yeah, it's been a long... I need to see it again. The one I watched a lot was Knocked Up. That was probably... That's a good one, Vic. Ooh, you put Knocked Up ahead of Superbad? I think I do. Ooh, wow. man, boy, oh, I, boy. There is just... I, knocked I, Up is really... It is funny. Superbad's a perfect comedy. Really? I mean, it's got yep. McLovin. <sighs> it's got Seth Rogen. It's got Bill Hader. There's so many great people in Superbad. It's, it's hard to it's disagree with you. Fun coming of age story. Yeah. Would you put Forgetting Sarah Marshall before uh, Superbad? Oh, oh, Superbad's way better than Forgetting Sarah Marshall. No, 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 no. No, Forgetting way. Sarah Marshall's good, but I think Get I'm with Steve. Get Into the Creek I, is better than Forgetting 
Is that her mark? No, no, I, no. Well, that's I don't know about that. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you give me a movie where Puff Daddy's eating little versions of himself. <laughs> it's a tough. Like Jeffries. <laughs> it's these are tough because really, you're you know. It's not like they're much better. You know what I mean? Because they're all that good. They all kind of yeah, are. In my opinion. Really, you look back on, what was that, the 2000s? Yeah. The early 2000s. That was a great era for comedies. Yeah. We had a lot of good guys. Uh, Wedding Crashers. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what's Frank the Tank? Uh, uh, oh, old, that's, uh, old school. Old school. Think about all these comedies well, you that had, around that time. You had the Will Farrells of the world, yep. which we love, but you also had the emergence of Seth uh, Seth, uh, Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen. Yeah, yep. and uh, you know, you see, and Jonah Hill, and some, and Bill Hader, and and so these are guys that we just, you know, I mean, it was it's a golden year for comedy. And Judd Apatow. Yep. Oh, the, Judd Apatow. The, the, yeah. He put all of those together. It was like it was great. Someone texted. Uh, There's a lot of humor in Super Red that doesn't age well. I will have to go back and watch it then. Yeah. It is. I mean, it, it is a very high school movie. Like I feel like I I never really related to it, but that maybe that's why I didn't like it that much. I guess in a way, I remember growing up on the movies of like the Porkies and Spring Break and all these movies of like these young group of dudes or yeah. people doing stupid ass. Yeah. And just hilarity ensues. So when I saw Super Bad, it just kind of brought me back to that time. Yeah. And it's definitely different because Porky's and uh, Hollywood Nights was one that you guys, I don't know if you remember that one, Steve, it had Robert no. Wall in there, uh, but it was a very similar movie. Of course, Animal House. Uh, it, a lot of the jokes they did then don't really fly today or even when they did Super Bad because they, they steered away about, uh, from some of those sexy or sexist jokes, if you will. Okay, here's uh, a question for you, Steve. Super Bad, 40-Year-Old Virgin. Super Bad. Oh, come on. Ooh. 40-Year-Old Virgin love, is 40-Year-Old better. Virgin is awesome. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm with Danny on this one. I think I've yeah. got it. Yeah, because I love Carell. Yeah, somebody even yeah. said you're forgetting about 40-Year-Old Virgin. Yeah. Best ever. So yeah. yeah. Above all of those, I would go with Pineapple Express. No. Just yeah. because of Danny McBride. It's Ooh, a, Hot Rod even more than that. Ooh, yeah. You can't say Hot Rod because <laughs> we're the only ones that like that movie. Oh, we got no. text. The text says it. Hot Rod with three exclamation points. That means um, I'm unless yeah. Hot Rod is becoming a cult favorite, do you remember how much hate we got for recommending that movie? Yeah, yeah those people are dumb. I'm hoping Hot Rod's one of those movies that everybody really appreciates like 10, 15 years after. Um, Pineapple Express, I think, definitely if you're a stoner you got to give it multiple stars remember when yeah. we went and saw that at a radio convention yeah and we all got really stoned before it yeah, and I think we all so were like great. nodding off while watching it but yeah. it was awesome it was a great flick um, and, and you know what here's what I got to give credit to Emma Stone is a great comedic actress but she's also a great actress She's really, I've seen her in a lot of serious stuff. She's good. And this is when we first got to see her, right? Is that the first movie we really got to know her? Is, is uh, Super Bad? I don't know. I think so. so. It's my first memory of Emma. And it's not easy for somebody in a comedy to then go out and do legitimate, you know, movies and really be given credit. But Emma's, she's, I, I think she's one of the best actors we got out there today. And, you know, and people can say whatever. Yeah, they want. that was her first major role. Yeah. She was on, like, some television stuff, but nothing beyond that until Super Bad. That's a, that's a movie of, when we were talking to Rain Wilson last week, his first movie was Galaxy Quest, and like the the, the lineup in the movie that we knew, let alone some of the the, the sub stars that have gone on, like the Sam Rockwells. We, we didn't know who Sam was in Galaxy Quest. He was that plucky guy that we thought he was going to die, uh, like the red shirt. And of course, Sam has gone on and been amazing, and Rain's been amazing in The Office. And these were people in that movie we didn't know, let alone you know Sigourney Weaver and, yep. and Alan Rickman, and of course Tim Allen. Uh, so a lot of people are texting. This is the end. They feel is this one of the best. That was oh, a good comedy. Gosh, is it better than Shaun of the Dead though? Oh, you're thinking the world's end. This is the end is oh. the post-apocalyptic yeah. one. Yes. Where, Everyone uh, plays themselves. Two. Yeah, Channing Tatum in a gimp mask. Danny McBride's incredible in it. She really, I mean, really it's is. It's the one where Emma Watson beats the crap out yeah, of Yeah, there are That great, was pretty awesome. There are <laughs> great moments in This is the End. A lot of great moments. There's a lot of weird moments. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. the problem. That's yeah. why I, I don't put it ahead really of... weird moments. I don't put it ahead of Knocked Up and, and Super Bad. I don't. No, I don't. Uh, or 40-Year-Old Virgin for that. Still a good movie and worth the watch. Because, yeah, Danny McBride, uh, I still... We'll sit down because uh, J Rubs is, re- is watching um, Eastbound and Down for the first time. Is he really? Yeah, and I'm what like, a great oh, show. I know. I'm like, oh, I'm so envious of you, but I'll sit and I'll watch with him because mm-hmm. this. I mean, Dan McBride is so good in that show, and it's on HBO. If you've never seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it. One of the true Mariner greats. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then he he played for the Mariners. The the character. That's right. Yeah, for I like forgot. It, but yeah, I forgot about that. You're yeah. right. Oh man. Um, I hate to report this, but, well, you know what? We got to talk about how Twitter is just a... 
place of just a cesspool of hatred. James Corden, you know him. He's the host of, uh, you know, the uh, the, uh, the, dry, the karaoke, carpool karaoke. Um, and he found out recently when he revealed a Game of Thrones spoiler on the show that, boy, people are going to be mean to you on the Internet. So some dude called him a fat F for spoiling, the sh- for spoiling Game of Thrones. And I don't know if James did it accidentally or intentionally. I don't know. But the guy then said, you are a fat F and seriously, I hope his kids get cancer. Which... Hey, yo, yo, it's just like, is that what we're doing? That's so funny because we were talking about our sit-ins, uh, great guys, uh, Dave and Mike, that are here watching the show. And we're just talking about just how you could have all, all these positive people that write, but every once in a while you get this person that's just, you just got to wonder, like, why are you so angry? And why do you, why do you even have any kind of social media? You should stop feeling such anger and miserable attitudes on, on a public forum. I've said it before. I, not everybody agrees with me, but I think that... When it comes to people saying hateful things, they will try to pick the place in your life that will hurt you the most. And a lot of times when it comes to race, they will go to race a lot because they might feel that would hurt that person the most. But if you're James Corden, go for his kids, go for his weight. You think that might hurt him the most. And I think that's exactly what this guy was trying to do. And James' response was really interesting. He said, quote, that is, without question, the single most upsetting thing I think you could ever say about me or my family. He then went on to say, please take a minute and think about what you just wrote and whether you want to be a person who publicly says such things. I believe you're better than that. That's an amazing response. 10, 15 years ago, I don't think a host would respond that way. I think they'd find a way to make a joke or maybe they would just be completely angry. Mm -hmm. We are at a different time where James just basically paused the shtick, if you will, and sort of appealed to him on a human level. The guy removed the tweet, I noticed. Yeah. It just says the tweet's unavailable. I don't know if he's responded to, oh, his account's suspended. I wonder if, you know what, a bunch of people probably complained. And, and, yeah. and what he wrote was pretty awful, but, you know, I think if enough people complain, you get your account suspended. Yeah, and if you're going to go take it, you, you know, the, 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 the millions of fans that James Corden has, uh, the guy replied. He did reply, Steve. The guy okay. said, it was just a joke, you know, like this segment was. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Can you not admit that you were just a jerk and apologize and just move on with your life? No, people aren't going to. No. People don't want to think they're the bad guy. I mean, really, the because that's an evil thing to say. It is. It's. And I, I'll tell you this right now. I've said stuff on that level to people. Mm-hmm. I have. I mean, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that, oh, yeah, I've done that. I've been that low of a miserable human being. And you're right, Vicky. It, nobody wants to think they're that guy. Some people want to think they're justified. You ruined my show, so I get to be mean to you. I get to wish cancer on your kid. I'm justified in that. And it's like, oh, no, dude, not really. You're not, no. And uh, James said, quote, well, I saw your hope for my son. My hope for yours is that they never get to read that their mother or father would wish cancer on any child as a joke. Because however you defend it to them, they'll never be able to understand how you could do such a thing. He does have a point. I mean, unless you raise your kid in a bubble, and that does happen, where you raise your kid in the same ignorance that you're in. I mean, that's the scary thing I have about certain philosophies that people continue to raise their children in because kids don't know better and then these poor kids aren't bad people but they've just had it indoctrinated in them and the next thing you know they're saying stuff thinking that it's the truth because that's what their parents told them it really sucks I noticed that uh, it was yesterday one of my buddies was a wrestler he posted something and somebody decided to comment on his picture someone who's following him on social media and decided like you know use a certain homophobic slur towards his way Okay, and you know my buddy who's very very supportive of all types of people. Everybody's just like, what the hell's wrong with you kind of a thing. And I'm like, why would someone, and it turns out it's like a, a teen that wrote that. Of course. And so I click on that person's page because I'm just curious. And then I look and see like, oh, there's the teen's mom. And I fall down this rabbit hole. I'm like, well, what kind of mom does this kid have? I don't know why this was like, this was my afternoon. So I click on the mom's oh, Facebook man. page. you went deep. And I read some of her posts and oh my goodness gracious. Like you now see? I get where this kid got it from. Oh, you met the apple and the tree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's, she's She's like yelling the worst stuff, like oh, racist stuff, this oh. stuff, that stuff, on social media, f- challenging people on her page and her family to fight. It's like, why? Where? I gotta just and that's get the, off this page. And that's the poor kid living in that. And then it's just like, oh, this stupid teen learned it from his parent, clearly. And you, you know what? We don't have parent licenses, and 
I, I've said it's a real big thing. I mean, when it, we talk about defending the rights of a child, and look, it's, that's big news right now. When do you, when does a child have rights, and when therefore do we have to defend them? And yet, we never take a look at that situation. Like, isn't that worse? Mm-hmm. Letting a kid grow up in an environment where. He's just going to obey the folks that are the gods in his life, and that would be your parents. I mean, geez, they've been taking care of you forever. Uh, You're wired to listen to them, and we let that happen. It's awful. It is awful. And this is, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was just listening to another radio show recently where they can't believe that people are being mean to his group of people. And I'm like... Well, you understand your group of people are also mean. You, you can't. You know you you want meanness to stop. Stop being mean. I mean, people are going to go back and forth with the ping pong of mean. Someone's got to go. You know what? Maybe we're being mean too. Maybe we should stop. This is why you really shouldn't listen to Ryan Castle. He's a mean man. Oh, he's horrible. I mean, the stuff he says. Oh, yeah. worse. Seriously, just go right to the men's room. Just he's after an evil you know, human being. Yeah, evil. Yeah, e to the vil. All right, it is time for listeners on the loose. Speaking of evil people, now we're giving them a voice. He gets you drunk and mean things oh, like that. Plays a twelve pack. I mean, what is that about? That's all about evil. Twelve pack of evil is what that guy is. All right. Um, it is time for Listeners on the Loose, where you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Whatever you want to talk about. You want to be good? You want to be evil? I guess we got to deal with it, right, Steve? Okay. Your calls, your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Brought to you by Como for News. What do you want to talk about, man? This is your choice. I mean, how many times have you said, nobody ever listens to me? Well, today is your day. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We will listen to you. But now, Steve will listen to you for a time being, but... Yeah, show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, you will get gone. It's not me that's telling you. I'm watching the text line, and yeah. there are sometimes the stories going on, and I just see the slew of texts that just say, gong, yeah. gong, 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 gong. The texters and have a lot to do with all this. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm a man of the people, BJ. Yeah. I'm a I man mean, of the texters. Everything you love about this show, this is all us. Everything you don't like about the show, it's the texters. Yeah, we blame the texters yeah. for everything. I mean, because similarly, they have creative control. What are you going to do? That's what they want nowadays. People want to control everything, so blame them. And if you bore us and don't get to the chorus, we will have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. Yeah. And if you do go on a little long, uh, don't forget that the Oscar music will play you off. It's, the band will play you off the stage. Just take that as a cue. And if you're on I-5 in Seattle, you're probably miserable right now. Yeah, yeah right under the convention center, I- I-5 northbound. Massive accident blocking all the lanes, and that's why you're going nowhere. Wow. So find another way to get to Seattle if you're traveling from the south, because I-5 ain't the way to go do it. Yeah, it's a beating. <laughs> I'm glad I, I mean, I, I look at that and go, boy, am I glad I got no northbound stuff to go do today. And if I do, I'm going to, I, I have to go visit a buddy, but I don't think he's northbound. If he is, he's out of luck. I'm not coming to see him. That's why we need a helicopter here. Yeah, that's it. So what happened? It's six mile backup. Yeah, Vicky showed me the picture. There's a good, it doesn't look good. Six yeah. miles? Yeah. Oh, oh that, my goodness. Yeah, I'm looking at the Washington State Department of Tra- Transportation Traffic um, Twitter page and yeah. That looks awful. And I don't know if there's a fatality, because if there is, it will take even longer. Uh, I don't know if we have any information about that, because they have to investigate, which means they just, I, uh, that's a beating. So if anybody was thinking of doing anything today, I don't know if it's going to happen. Just stay home. Yeah. Blame uh, it on the texters. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I got to see where it's going to send me to visit my buddy, because I might have to tell him that I was supposed to have lunch with him, but I think I might go, hey, dude, I'm out. Sorry. Or you that you come see me, you deal with it. Cool story, man. <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> there you go. Traffic. It's a thing. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. Oh, we got a text message. Guys, have you seen the little karate kid? The kid that wouldn't give up on kicking that wood board? It made me cry, and I don't typically cry at anything. Oh, my God. I was crying this morning. <laughs> Yeah, I saw uh, it yesterday, man, and it yeah. definitely put a huge smile. It made my day. Yeah? Like, what a great video. 
Yeah, I haven't, I, don't, I haven't seen the video yet. Oh, man, it's everywhere. Yeah. I'll have to pull it up. Yeah, it's uh, spreading virally, and it is this little boy. His name is Phoenix. Great name. Uh, he could not break a board during a demonstration at his karate class in Florida recently. So the little kid started crying because, I mean, there you are in front of everybody trying to get this done. Yeah, all his buddies are watching. He yeah. tries to kick it. You know, you're trying to break down like that thin board. Yeah. And he's slamming his heel down. And he's falling down because he's not hitting it hard enough. But, I mean, props to his, I, mean, I would imagine it's a sensei yeah. or, or whoever his instructor is just will not let him quit yeah and he's he's definitely i mean now he's crying he's just seen the video and uh, we got the audio of this for you Got jacked again watching. Yeah, You're and, gonna they're cry. and they're mobbing this kid. <laughs> yeah, and they're mobbing him. Like celebrating good job, buddy. his success. I love it. Goosebump yeah. City, baby. You think the guy? One kid in the back just does a handstand. He's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my friend broke a wood board. Do you think he helped him? Do you think he kind of snapped at himself a little bit while the kid was? Wow, there? look at you, man. That's what I know. I would have done it. I'm, I'm, I don't know I'm, if he did. I would have done it. I, I think that poor little kid did. was trying like a son of a gun too. I'd be like, I got to give this kid a win. Did you ever do taekwondo? No, uh, Joey did. Because that was one of the coolest things ever was when we, we got to do that. where like, Break a board? Break a board. Yeah, I broke it with the foot and broke it with the fist. The fist one, I, never, I felt like I could just take on the world. And then you realize, oh, I'm around all a bunch of people that could take on the world. Yeah. Because we all just did it. Well, if you, I mean, there's, there's something about, you know, in, the, in, the, in those Asian teachings. If you got your chi going, I mean, you really can wreck house. And that's why you're supposed to be able to break the board. I don't know if you had the chi going, Steve, or if somebody just tried to help you. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't get the I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't get the vibe that the, the, the sensei or whoever it is is breaking that board. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell either. But I was like, boy, that's what I would do. Just, just to give the kid a win because he was going through grief. He was a little kid. Yeah, but talk yeah. about like just getting that adrenaline going when all the kids around him are chanting it on, and the, the everyone's just like, "Do it, you can do it." And he just finally found whatever inner fortitude that made it happen. Yeah, DJ. well, he kept trying. Yes, you know, and I, I love that everybody rallied around him, and uh, you know, he definitely was emotional about it because it sucks to think I'm in front of everybody. It's tough, you know. It's tough when you are in front of a group of people and fail at such a young age. I don't know if there's a better way to do things for people because mm-hmm. it's I mean, we all remember that. Do you remember when you failed in front of a group of people for the first time? Usually it's at a very young age. Yeah. You know, or you think you failed. It's, all the it's, time. Oh, it's just it's soul crushing to think you're failing in front of your peers. And I can remember school moments and it's like, oh, my God, like if I ever had a crush on anybody and then there I am making a complete ass of myself in front of the class. And it was soul crushing. The sports were rough at times. Yeah. Maybe, but hot especially because you know I put myself in that position where like looking back why would you want to be a goalie man all the pressure's on you good point you give up the goal and then everybody is upset with you even if the defenseman just got walked by it yeah. doesn't matter you were that last line of defense and when it happens you never feel more small oh, but even yeah. in Little League Baseball man when the I used to hate it because I was an awful baseball player. I hated it when like the pressure was on and they needed me to get a hit because if I didn't, the game was over. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just yeah. like, and you could hear the groan from the parents. Yeah, who were the worst. I remember oh. this as a kid, man. Oh, it's so hard. And that's that's why I always joke about that. My and and it's true though. My coach told me finally. I think he was just like, just yeah, lean kid. into the pitch, man. A walk is as good as a hit. Yeah, do so. And I would kid. do it, and I would get hit by the pitch, and he was proud. Yeah. And I'm like looking back on it, it's pretty messed up. It is pretty messed up. He wanted to give you a win, buddy. I was stoked when I got hit yeah. by the pitch. I'm like, I, as long as I'm hitting it. Yeah, he wanted you to be the hero. Yeah, I mean, you're going home, you need to be in Epsom salts, but that's okay. You know what? You get hit a couple times a game, you're doing what you need to do. Somebody says, I thought the same thing, BJ, about the wood board, and I felt horrible for thinking that kid didn't actually do it himself. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean to the kid. I really felt like it would have been a nice thing for the guy to do, because he made it look good to the... If he did, it looked like the kid did it himself, yeah. but I would have done anything I could have to try to help that kid break the board. I felt so bad for him. Damn. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Randy and Everett, you are on the rock. Okay, DJ. Speaking of failing in front of your friends, I would like to see you once a week go against Meg and beat Meg. Whether it's a roulette wheel, a dartboard, it's got to be a random thing. You can't have it already set up. 
I want you to uh, do beat Migs once a week against them. See how you do. Oh, so it's not even true. Oh, I have that answer. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Uh, all right, so are you? I, I, maybe I misunderstood. You want me just to do the game, or do you want me to do random games with him? No, I want you to do the game. Oh, play okay. the game, yeah. Once okay. a week. Not like randomly sure. just be like, Migs, play dominoes with me. <laughs> I thought he said he wanted me to play darts with you. That's why I had to ask. I'm like, oh. Okay. I think he's saying like just we pick a random time, not like, hey, tomorrow, oh. the 847 yeah, game, BJ, you're playing. It's like, gotcha. You. Just like on Tuesday, Rev's like, BJ, you're playing. We're not having that kind of a thing. Look, I, I, look Randy, I have to tell you something. Seriously. He wants a custom beat, Migs? For Here's, you I, should start I, charging I, people for customs. Ah, yeah. Oh, geez. Well, I, I appreciate the call, Randy. I, 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 it's because Vicky and I are of the same mindset. We love to play that game, but we can't. I mean, so is a lot of other people. But when you I guys were stepped up before, I've crushed you. It's true. I it think we true. tied once. Yeah, and that right. is probably the most crowning achievement of my life. Yeah. Do we, do, we throw it, do we throw it out there? Because I don't want to take it away from people that really love to play against you. I, I would love to, but I mean, it really, this is a show for the people, so I feel like I, I, I shouldn't steal How about one of these times, if a listener decides that they get through and they don't want to play, they say, BJ, will you play for me? I'd love to. Okay. I mean, I would have won, I, I probably would have won today, but gosh, there was that time when I played you, Steve. I mean, I just didn't know any of the questions. Somebody agrees with Randy. We got to make it happen. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. I, I surely have a level of knowledge that you don't, but you also have a level of knowledge that I don't, so I think it's going to be a fair fight. But you just never know. Yeah, the questions are always random. Yeah, they're all over the road, and there are just things that you know that I don't. And, and, I mean, and, I, and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. So, yeah. Somebody wanted to talk about uh, stress in sports. I was a pitcher all through high school and college. I played in the national tournament in college. Oh, damn. Talk about pressure. Pitching in the national tourney to try and get the College World Series. I was scouted by the pros, but I couldn't make it due to an injury. Wow. Dude, I was thinking, and even though I, I was just thinking, because I, I, you, you tell me about how tough it is, and as you were talking about the goalie thing, I watched uh, game two of the Bruins Hurricanes, uh, and I watched it live, and dude, they were he was like Swiss cheese. It was so, granted, they weren't all his fault, but it was just so many in a row. Yep. You be. I mean, what does a guy? What, what is going through that guy's head? Because six. Go- I mean, they had ten unanswered goals on Carolina before the the, the Hurricanes finally scored a goal against the Bruins. What do you do in that spot? I can only speak on a beer league level, so it's yeah. a whole lot different. I just try and think, man, I'm going to have a really good Coors Light once all this is over. Yeah. Honestly, though, it's tough to get out of your own mind, man. There are times where I had to take a break from playing hockey because it was just it was affecting me psychologically outside of hockey because it is such a stressful. Position, and I'm just talking about on a rec league. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, I just like, I, you know what, I need to take a week off just to kind of f- fall in love with playing hockey again. I'm starting to dread it. Yeah. But that's what they're talking about with, not to get super nerdy about goalie stuff with hockey, but a lot of people are attributing to Karask, uh, the goalie for the Boston Bruins. They're saying the Bruins are doing so well right now because Tuke has figured out a way to just move on when a bad goal goes in, which has not always been the case for him. If he's given up a goal that he felt that should have been avoided or the ref didn't call a penalty in time, he would let it affect him and it would just ruin the rest of the yeah the i remember that about him i mean he's a mental case that guy's i mean you go online just search tukaresk loses it like he's breaking sticks he's yelling at people he's a basket case but for some reason he's got it locked in and he's in the zone so when he gives up gives up a bad goal he doesn't let it it just like rolls right off his back it's pretty impressive and i think that's why the bruins are doing so well Wow, I know it pains you to say that too. But I like Tuka. Yeah, because he's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, there's always yeah, and, and he's a goalie, so yeah, yeah you got to love him for that. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. We got more of your calls, more of your texts at nine thirty three on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, somebody texted in. BJ, did you hear about uh, Tim Conway? Yeah, dude. Man. Of course, as you know, I'm going to be, I'm, well, you may not know this, but I'm going to be going to a funeral. Uh, this, uh, I'm leaving on Saturday to go to the funeral of, of my, basically my second mom. This has been a tough week. So many people have passed away, you know, in my life, let alone some of the luminaries we lost. We forgot, we, we didn't mention because of the fact that uh, Doris Day passed away, and I got all the news, but Peggy Lipton passed away, who's Rashida Jones, you know that actress that was I on mean, The Office? You would know her in Parks yeah, and Rec. by name I do. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Rashida, that was her mom. There was a show called The 
Mod Squad in the 70s, and I'm old enough to remember. She was also on Twin Peaks as well. So Peggy Lipton, uh, it's just like she, we lost her. We lost Doris Day, uh, which, you know, she was a big star in the 60s. These are people you guys don't know so well, but I do because I was a little kid and they were everybody. My parents talked about him. Tim Conway, you may know because uh, Tim... Gosh darn, man. The dude was amazingly talented. He was an improv genius in my mind because he you could just give him anything and he'd go with it. You know, whereas some people need a script to be funny. Yeah. But Tim, gosh, man, uh, 85 years old. Uh, you know, I'm sure he had a great life. He had a long illness. We know him from the Carol Burnett show. I don't know if you ever, ever watched it, but he had a great character where uh, Carol played this secretary that was just a horrific secretary. And he was this guy, Mrs. Wiggins. And God... You know, when you watch a TV show and they crack up laughing because they just are making each other laugh while they're still trying to do their skit, you know, they uh, you, you sometimes see Jimmy Fallon do that a lot, and I really feel like that's a nod to Carol Burnett when I see Jimmy crack up during his own skits. I love that kind of comedy. I've heard Tim was the type of guy, his improv skills were so top-notch that uh, whenever he would be a part of any of these things that the other comics and other improv artists couldn't even keep it together because he was that good. But for a lot of people, probably in Danny's and Vicky's world, they probably only know Tim Conway as the voice of a SpongeBob character. Oh, that's right. Barnacle Boy. Wait. Oh, he was Barnacle Boy? That I'm guessing the old Barnacle Boy. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, and Mer- yeah Mermaid Man sidekick. So that was Tim Conway. That was wow. his voice. Well, I did know him only because I, um, my mom was such a big fan of Tim Conway that she showed me all of his movies and the Carol Burnett show when I was growing up. And that's like who my first comic that I actually watched on TV was, was Tim Conway, which is oh, crazy. Oh, that's awesome, Dan. But he always reminded me of my grandpa. He had that same kind of like the oldest man skit that he would do. Yeah. There's a great movie out there called Private Eyes that he was in with Don Knotts. And oh, it was, that's right. It was fantastic. Like if you ever wanted to see like comic, like comedy in its rare, like most simplistic form, it's great. Were they the Apple Dumpling Gang as well? Yes. yes. Okay, that's where I, I knew they paired before. Uh, he was Dorf? Remember? Yeah, was, I was about to say, I was yeah. like, people are bringing up his greatest role as Dorf. Dorf. Dude, that was my favorite. As a yeah, kid, I would always was. pretend to be Dorf by just putting shoes on my knees. Yep. <laughs> and, and guys, you're not old enough. I mean, you might have seen the reruns, but you just think about when I was a little kid, Pretty much, it was only 15 years after the end of World War II. So there were a lot of World War II, there was a lot of war-based comedies. And you had Hogan's Heroes, you had McHale's Navy, Tim Conway. That was his first show, and I didn't know that. The guy was so great in that show, that was the first thing he'd ever done on television. And you know... Sometimes you can go back and watch those old shows and go, geez, how did that guy get a job? Probably because nobody was doing TV or they just didn't have a lot of money and and TV wasn't that popular. Tim Conway was good on that show, McHale's Navy. And uh, that was, man... Gosh, dude, everyone around me's dying. I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I'm that old guy where everybody I know is dying. I feel like a lot of people are struggling with that. I just got a message, it's a real bummer news. Our buddy Nathan from Woodshed just messaged us as a, someone I was a friend on, on Facebook, didn't really know that well, but I know he was a big fan of our station, uh, Adria Jones. She just passed away from her <laughs> battle with cancer. She was oh, a friend man. of the station, a uh, friend with the band Woodshed, and now an eternal part of everyone. If you guys have time to mention her, it would mean a lot. Yeah, definitely, That's man. awful. Um, that's, we're so, so sorry for, for the loss of I remember seeing her posting about it, uh, and it just kind of like stops you in your tracks when you see someone who's a young person, yeah, and they're sharing on Facebook that they're battling something like cancer, and it just kind of just you know just makes it all the other stupid s that we get all worked up about. Like, what the hell? Are we why, why are we freaking out over this stuff when people have serious issues and serious like you know battles that they're going through? And she obviously was just dealing with this for a while, and it just sucks to hear. Lots of love to her family and, yeah. and her friends. And, and like you said, Steve, she loved the station. And so having somebody who was part of our family like that, it's it's always a punch in the gut, like you mm-hmm. said, when they're young. You know, when you're, I don't know, there's something in my mind that, like a Tim Conway going, it's like, look, he was 85. He had an amazing life, I'm sure. It's easier to reconcile a little bit for me. But when somebody's so young, you're like, oh, man. Yeah. Such a tough thing. And good good point, Steve. It's like, you know, do we need to sweat the stuff we're sweating when people are really going through stuff? Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. They're, I don't know if you ever met her. Or, uh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. She was a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. That's just, oof. Well, I, 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 I hope, this is where I hope that all- to our family. This is where I hope all the beliefs that say there's a heaven, I hope that's, that's true. Because people like that deserve to be in a place like that. So, you know, I'm going for it, Steve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say, Steve, I hope you're right. 
Mm-hmm. Hope you're right and there's a good place. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm never going to get to go there, but yeah, maybe unless you put in a good word for me. <laughs> no, I believe in you. Well, thanks, buddy. I mean, Steve plays drums for Talk. Jesus. He's got to know a guy, right? You want me to recommend you on LinkedIn, and now you want me to say nice things about you here as well. I, I, I've <laughs> yeah. only got so much love to give, BJ. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, at some point, you're going to be at the pearly gates, and it's, I'm okay. just going to say, yeah. hey, no, Steve is my buddy. I mean, you know, I'm just carry my cymbal bag since I play drums for Jesus. Oh, you can, oh you, yeah. You're I can, my you're roadie. roadie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. Hopefully that, that's that your gets only me. chance. Thanks, buddy. Well, it's <laughs> if you know what, you're right, Steve. That really is my only conversation. I think we're both going to figure it out. Yeah, we're going to with that. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, somebody brought up a really funny point about just that we were talking about um, that comic, Ahmed Ahmed, that got oh. the cops called on him because of a joke that somebody felt was a terrorist threat. Somebody brought up <laughs> the so greatest stupid. conspiracy theory idea on this one. This is what if it was his publicist who called it in to give him free publicity? And I'm like, dude, if that's the case, the man's a genius. I can't say you're crazy. I mean, we live in an age of fake news where no. anything is possible. Nobody would do that. That's like as if an actor would pretend that a bunch of guys beat him up and said some mean things to him in yeah. hopes that he'd be able to keep his job on a show on Fox. Like, yeah, nobody would do that. Kind of nobody would stop yeah. yeah. hmm. yeah. By the way, they're still trying to figure out if they're going to let him be in the last season of, of Empire. At this point, let him in the last season. Have him have him go out the way that he pretended. I know, too. The last oh, episode, geez. he gets beaten up. By those same two guys. Yeah. By those guys. Guys. Yeah. Oh, how about he gets beaten up by people that are actually fans and go, you know, we just don't like you as a person. It has nothing to do with any of your orientation. We just don't like you. You're I'm an sorry. idiot. If they say at some point in the final season, we will reenact what he said happened to him. You're going to watch? And that's how they're going to take him out on the show. I'm coming back to Empire. I've been out since season two. Me too. And I'm willing to come back. Actually, season one and a half. Yeah. I, I think last the yeah, I'm with you on that, Steve. I, don't, I can't remember anything. Uh, by the way, since you brought it up, this Sunday, are you watching? Game it's of the, Thrones? It's the no. last. You said you'd watch the last yeah. episode like you did with Breaking Bad. It's the last episode. I'm busy. While you guys watch people kill each other, I'm going to be busy killing Pitfall Jones at Without a Cause Wrestling Whoa. this Sunday in a last man standing match. Shots oh, fired. As I beat him over the head with a steel chair, man. All right, you've got a reason. <laughs> so you can watch your Game of Thrones. Actually, it should be done in time for people to watch their Game of Thrones. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, Without a Cause Wrestling on Sunday starts at 4 p.m. Well, we're not going to spoil it anyway. We can't. You know that. We're going to have to wait at least a week before we even talk about it. So you will have all of next week to watch it. I will do that. All right. But I'm not doing it on Sunday. I'm going to be too busy celebrating my big victory over Pitfall Jones. I don't know how to tell you this. What's that? I don't think it's going to happen, buddy. Oh, you wait. I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting my money on Pitfall. No. I just don't feel put your like money against the little I'm, celebrity. I'm, I, I support the <laughs> children. I, I, put the, I have to support the children. And they say MIG stinks, and so I have to be with them on this. Except for Jameson. She's cool with me. Well, Jameson is, you know, her, her parents really haven't raised her. And heal up, Jameson. I heard you uh, broke your arm or your wrist. I saw it on Facebook. Oh, no. Sucks. Yeah. Oh, you know, no. That wasn't, it had nothing to do with you. Right? No, she's a good, she's okay. on the good side of okay. Steve Miggs. Okay. Okay. She's on the good yeah, side. The verified champ. I, I didn't know the verified champ. Had a good side. With, not with many kids, but okay. that one, yes. Okay, very good. This is the dumbest conversation I've ever had, but I'm enjoying it. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of wrestling, someone yeah. want to know, hey, Migs, are you excited? TNT is back in the wrestling business. That's yeah, right. what's this? They announced it this morning. All Elite Wrestling, that's Cody Rhodes, who we've had on the show before. Oh, Cody. His promotion is just taking off big time. They just signed a deal with uh, Turner Broadcasting. So Good for him. That's a legit cable channel, a big stick for yes. a, an up-and-coming wrestling promotion. I mean, I don't know if they're ever going to go head-to-head with the WWE, but it's definitely offering more people a chance to see what they're going to be doing. And it will be different. And I want to give a shout-out to... Uh, uh, Aubrey Edwards, a local ref in town, she just got announced by All Elite Wrestling as being one of the referees for their promotion. Which oh, is, how cool is that? It's huge, man. It's very huge. She's been busting her ass, so it's very cool to see that. And Cody's story is definitely, uh, uh, you know, it's it's an inspiring one. I mean, the dude, uh, you know, follow he followed his dreams. He was just like, look, this is what I want to do. WWE I mean, yeah. wasn't treating him right. He didn't want to be that character. He kept asking to no longer be the Stardust character. And finally, when his contract was up, he's like, I'm going to bet on myself, and I'm going to just go my do my own thing killed it on the indies and then bet on himself even more by hooking up with the billionaire owner from yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars and a few other wrestlers and they started a new promotion which a lot of people laughed at but now TNT's on board and okay, I mean I hope for great things man yeah why not well, you know what, man? Uh, that's that's good news. You got to love it when a guy bets on himself and it works out because it's not an easy road to travel when you go against the system. I mean, people would say, "Dude, are you crazy? How could you leave the WWE?" But you know what? Sometimes you got to bet on yourself. Somebody just said uh, one offbeat thing they do when it comes to food. I line my fries up longest to shortest when I when they get low. My kids now do it too. Huh? Longest to shortest when they get low. That's funny. 
And then, like you, it's like you know, does he? So does he eat him? So in reverse order, so that he eats the shortest first, and that way, well, you know, I don't know. That's, you know what I do sometimes yeah. with fries? With fries, I don't. I don't is it, can we say this on the radio? Well, Ricky Henderson told me he did. Oh, this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I'll grab a couple of them when the, the, at the top of them and throw it in the bag because you know sometimes you always have like extra fries at the end. Oh yes, but sometimes there's like the the small ones and the yeah. they're not that great. So I want to make sure I have a couple good fries in the bag at the end. <laughs> so you need bag fries. Oh yeah. No well, you know, I, I, I like that because there's no worse feeling than reaching in the the fry box and there's nothing there, and then you go maybe some spilled over and there's none. Yeah, this is devastating. Yeah, so I like that. You, you you psych yourself out. I dig that. All right, there's a big question. This needs an answer. What do Ryan Castle and a million dollars have in common? I'm going to tell you at 950 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. He's the drunk in charge. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a million dollars have in common? They don't go as far as they used to. Oh. And boy, I will tell you, there was times where I could take you anywhere. Uh huh. But now you're, you know, man. Yeah, get a little limp going. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. What are we talking about again? Yeah. <laughs> Me not going as far as I used to. Yeah. Steve has a hankering for both, somebody said. A uh, hankering for some spankering. Both are hidden under BJ's mattress. Did not know that. You had all that money under the mattress. Well, yeah. And Ryan, if he'd move over a little bit, I could put a little cash over there. It smells no. musty down here. Yeah. It's musty. It's more musky. <laughs> Got a new study, and they asked people in different generations what your net worth has to be for you to be rich. And not a single generation thinks just being a millionaire means you're rich anymore. No. The average answer now is 2.3 million. If you have 2.3 million bucks, people think they're rich. I heard the other day you need $3 million if you want to retire. Yeah, that's... And that's to live for like 20 years. That sucks, dude. Yeah. Because I got news for you. I don't think I'm going to hit the goal. Man, I ain't even close. Yeah, I... When I heard that news, I was so pissed. I'm like, come on! Who can get that? $3 million? Yeah, so I'm done. So I'm going to be living off the teat of the government. Thank you. Good on you. Speaking of teats, uh, Ryan Castle's got a morning drop back. <laughs> and four of them. <laughs> he's got four. Yeah, he's coming like up. Like a puppy. Yeah. BJ and Mig's play of the day. He uses scissors to eat his spaghetti. So based on this, and it doesn't have to be with food, we want to know, what offbeat thing do you do? David, you are on the rock. I sleep naked, but if I wake up in the middle of the night to drop a deuce, I have to put sweatpants on, so when I walk in, I have something to pull down. <laughs> BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. Of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the, one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of your all of your information you list all of your assets and all of your creditors that's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities and so the court hearing is just usually about a five minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and, and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct thanks Travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter Dot com. Thanks for listening.